England on Thursday got off to an impressive start beating New Zealand, while their opponents today, Sri Lanka, although losing to Pakistan, won quite a few admirers, and their manager, Sir Gary Sobers, warned England they wouldn't be easy to beat. Now, as we join the match at Taunton, England are batting. They've scored seven without loss, and Tavare is facing John. The commentators are Peter Loder and Jim Laker. So Tavare to face. And turned it very nicely. Helped the swing around through midwicket, the first boundary of the morning. Very confident they were in a much smoother, better start here from Chris Tavare this morning. That's a beautiful shot. In swing half volley, clipped away quite beautifully through midwicket there by Tavri before. Perfect piece of time in there. Oh, that's a good shot. Seems to be a great deal of pace in that all the time in the world. Again off the back foot, leather it straight for four. So Tavri moving into the 20s there. Goes on to 21. It's a short arm jab from Chris Tavare and uh, straight back past the bowler. A change of bowling. Ranatunga is the medium pacer. I last watched him bowl out in Sri Lanka in the first ever test match they played against England. He was a much slimmer version then. He's still only 19 years old. I'm told to Peter Loder that he likes the rice too much. <laughs> yes, he's... Uh, Carrying a little bit of extra weight there, perhaps. No ball. Good throw by Demel, but uh, always in hand. Comfortable two for Chris Tamaray. Well, that's a good, strong, well-placed shot. Plenty of right hand, and... Uh, that was tremendous power. Back foot, effortless, and uh, a vacant mid-on position. Sorted out for Ranatunga. Oh, well played, and yes. Caught behind the wickets by the Alvis. The bowling of Ranatunga, and there's some excitement and jubilation for the Sri Lankans who get their first breakthrough. The wicket of Chris Tavare, caught at the Alvis, bowled by Ranatunga for 32. Yes, and this uh, just a little bit of movement off the wicket away from Chris Tavare. A lovely little thin outside edge for the keeper. There it is. The first strike to Ranatunga. Tavare caught De Alvis behind the stumps for Ranatunga for 32. 49 for one, 17.2 overs. Now that's a respectable striking rate within the limits of the 60 over innings in the Prudential World Cup. Oh, fine, Nick. That was such a fine nick on that full toss by David Gower. It's the applause, not only for him off the mark, but also for the 50 up. 53, the England score. Oh, good shot. Marvellous, but I did prompt the best from Graham Fowler. Lovely to see him play strokes like that. Four runs. Throw the ball back with John, the burly opening bowler. Oh. Hold him. <laughs> Spectacular dismissal. The big man John has uprooted Graham Fowler's off stump, and Sri Lanka take their second wicket, England 78 for two. And here, the end of. Graham Fowler, and you see he hits all round this. And he goes for the big one. A six very tempting shot here, and uh, nobody plays it better than Alan Lamb when he's in form. No problem at all to put that straight out of Taunton.
And a fine strike this from Alan Lamb, moving down the wicket, picking it up. Fine straight hit. And gone for another one, and he's middled that too. He's worked out the angle there. Well, just a nice pace, of course, medium pace for Alan Lamb, using his feet once again, dancing down the pitch, putting it uh, just slightly wider than the previous one. He's poked that away on the leg side. No bothering to run, he knows it's all the way for four more. Not quite as elegant as some of his strokes, but most effective. Picked his spot nicely, two or three yards to the right, would have gone straight to the skipper there, but he's found the gap once again and collects four runs, whether it's the last over before lunch or not. That's swung away with a spin, could be out now, he's just cleared that man on the field, and uh, Ken Palmer waiting to give the signal, yes, just cleared those advertising boards and goes for six. And no doubt when that ball left the gallows bat, he was thinking of the match against New Zealand two days ago when he was caught off just about an identical stroke. And if this game had been played at the Oval, there's every chance he would have been caught again. Gave himself some real room then, it was a magnificent stop. A magnificent piece of field in there, but still it uh, was a single to go and that takes him on to 50. David Gow maintaining this excellent, consistent run he's had for England. That short again, beautifully tickled away fine, picked his spot. That out feels very fast down there, and it's four more. That's his 50. Pushed away again, nice and casually through that leg side field. So Alan Lamb continuing in the form he showed against New Zealand the over two days ago. Made a great hundred there. He's gone to 50 at a very fast rate. He's only received 49 balls, a couple of sixes and four boundaries. And his <laughs> Well, went for it too often, and just dragged it on, it wasn't really quite short enough. So Alan Lamb goes, and we'll get to Ratnayaka. Oh, and trouble here. Oh, oh dear, tragedy, calamity there. Got in saying six, he's so quick between the wickets, he would have made his end, but uh, it's very doubtful whether uh, Gow would, and a long throw coming in from John in the outfield, and left poor old Mike getting high and dry. So a bit of sympathy there from Gatton, who was running between the wickets, was an absolute feature at the Oval a couple of days ago, but it's brought his downfall here. And 93 for four now, with Gatting run out for seven. Well, this really should be a set, a scene quite set for Ian Botham. He's got 18 overs left out there. There's 193 on the board. Four men are out. It's a flat wicket on a small ground. elegantly by Gower yeah. racing back for the second this time both will have to struggle and he's out he's run out oh dear great tragedy here for this big crowd and the Sri Lankans are joyful they're dancing up and down the field they're applauding each other 
and Gower concerned now in two consecutive runouts. Well, that's not going to amuse the big fella. Everybody waited for such a long time to see Ian Botham appear internationally on this ground, and he's run out for naught. The figure recognised by everybody in the cricket world, Gary Sobers, who's been doing such a great job with Sri Lankan side. It really inspired him a great deal. Helped away on the leg side. And a nice flick there by Gould, brings in four more. That's his second boundary. And it slips him nicely into double figures. Shunting, enthusiastic crowd here. And they're queuing since the early hours of the morning. And uh, there's not a seat to spare down here. That's a good shot. Good, firm, old-fashioned cloud over the bowler's head. And plenty of applause. As I said, this crowd have really revelled in their one-day cricket with the great success of Somerset over the last few years. Oh, high first bounce. When you say a first bounce four, you never expect it to be behind the keeper, directly behind the stumps. David Gower on 97. Oh, many a mile, many a mile into the pavilion and past it. The figure six we've seen today. And that gives David Gower a magnificent century. Someone more to tell him that this is David Gower's act. Ah. <laughs> it's a fair cop. And back to the cricket. Oh, a repeat. Almost a replica, not quite as far, but you can see how David Gower on the up from outside off stump. Such talent and such timing. Away it goes again, that's his favourite corner. Medium distance this time. Five iron, I think, Tom. Not quite the three iron. Certainly pitched and stopped in the car park. Well, some sort of headgear or protection needed down that quarter of the ground. And there it goes again. Well, if I can't get them myself, I think I'd like to see D. Gower get them in that style. High, square. Now, what a place to hit a six. That is a six. Deep over extra cover. Now, you don't see many sixes in that direction. My first instinct, Tom Graveney, was to say, well, he hasn't middled that, but it went on and on and on. Well, it really is a phenomenal shot, this. Well, Gower and Gould, two runs short of the 100 partnership. Gower and Lamb put on 96, but this is Gower and Gould. He's bowled him! It was never to be, was it? 130 runs for David Gower, the crowd stand up, all around the ground, people are standing and clapping. Because apart from being at the end, an innings of blind aggression, it was an innings of class and style. A great delight. And so wonderful should happen at Taunton, in their first international match, to see the very best of David Gower. It's high, it's in the air. Will it be caught? It's caught with something of a fumble by Ranatunga.
Fine shot by Graham Dilley. He really uh, came into his own as a batsman a couple of years ago against Australia. That marvellous stand with Ian Botham at Leeds when uh, they hauled England out of an impossible position. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That was a colossal blow. Tremendous strength. It's gone again. Right into space. All the batsman's instincts. Decent timing. And what seems to be a very heavy and punishing bat. In the air. Dropped. Kurupu. Sadly, loses a hat, loses the catch, and retreats to long. Three balls left, 3.29 for seven. Oh, plenty of room, a long hit, and well collected this time by Kurupu. It's a mercy after that drop catch, and the crowd give him warm applause. Yes, and just the wrong thing for an opening batsman to do at this stage of the day. Whack. Marks has gone. And he really has gone. Gone forever, I'm afraid, Vic Marks. Well, it's the sort of chance you have to take with uh, a couple of balls to go. Yes, Vic Marks sacrificing his wicket in the cause of trying to give Graham Dilley the strike. And it was a good throw from Karupu. And coming to the wicket is Lancashire's Paul Allott. One ball. Good night. He's gone. Well, it was worth turning out to watch Graham Dilley score his 29 runs. runs. So we ask the spectators not to run onto the field. Thank you. And I think his innings was typical of the whole England effort. No one played for himself, they all played for the team. Greatly appreciated by the Taunton crowd who are watching international cricket for the very first time. And there it is, 3.33 for nine after 60 overs 29 to Graham Dilley 333 for nine will take some getting well that was quite a total for Sri Lanka to chase but they shown against Pakistan their batsmen had to be respected we join their reply in the second over with six on the board for no wicket and Graham Dilley is bowling to Karupu the commentators once more Peter Loder and Jim Laker First ball here of uh, Dilly's O, we can see again. Thick outside edge, went like a rocket off the outside edge. Gatting there at slip, but uh, really a precious little hope of clinging hold of that. That's edge, and he's gone this time all right. Very good catch, slow down by Mike Gatting. And Dilly strikes an early blow. Threatened it in that first few balls there to Kurupu. Little flash outside the off stump, and that ball went very quickly indeed. It was an excellent slip catch there by Gatting. So 11 for one, and Sri Lanka already in trouble. And that's a magnificent catch. You won't really see many better catches than that at slip. Both of them have not a happy day. He run out for naught, but my word, that really was a most brilliant catch. Dilly strikes again, his extra pace, they giving him the wicket. So I was saying a bit earlier that uh, 
Ian Botham, having lost a bit of weight, but really was athletic. Tumble and catch there. And well worth seeing again. Really was a spectacular effort there from Botham. Oh, it's a lifter. The first one that's really taken off there from Bob Willis. Letty Mooney, most fortunate to get away with that. Off the outside edge, lifted way, way high over the top of slips. Dillian now for his uh, sixth over. Uh, no ball, given some very firm treatment there by Skipper Mendes. Driven quite delightfully through mid-off for four. Hooked away, oh, high and handsome, six runs. Dilip Mendes, the Sri Lankan captain, did not improve in that stroke. Oh, full flow of the bat, and it's uh, head high, but through the covers, and that's four runs. Four runs to Vedamuni. Another cracking shot. Oh, what a shot. Dilly Mendes, the skipper, I mean, Graham Fowler, was only 20 yards away, but never looked like making the ground. And isn't he built for it? After 18 overs, Sri Lanka 71 for two. England were just 54 for one. That's six. No doubt, from the moment the ball left the bat, it was six runs. Off the bat of Siddhat Vetimuni. Oh, pleasantly played. This might be the captain's 50. Takes the one and comes back for second. So that really has been a spectacular and well-earned Half century by the Sri Lankan captain, Dilip Mendes. Yes, he's played some beautiful shots. Straight, that's out. Isn't it amazing how often it happens? The introduction of the snow goal up, and the bats can take all sorts of chances. Nicely bowled by Vic Marks. Just drifting along from Midland leg to middle, and Siddharth Vettimuni having scored 33 hard fought runs. That's a better sweep to a wider ball, and that's beaten by Gadding down on the square leg boundary. They don't mind hitting the ball. Madugala hits a four and brings up the hundred. Who successfully cleared that mid wicket boundary as he cleared the fence? No, he hasn't. He's got all right. Going for the longest part, Mark takes his second wicket. Tavry does that very nicely indeed. And the whole of England team over to congratulate him on a very well judged catch. This Madagali here not uh, really working at his angles on this ground. That's the longest boundary, but a very, very well judged catch here by Chris Tavry. in action again and this time Mendes is down and Bob Willis takes a very smart catch there at mid on so it really is a field day for Vic Marks down here now what about spinners playing in limited over cricket he's in figures of three for nine he's in his sixth over and his uh, appreciation there to Bob Willis as you can see for a very good catch skipper down the wicket hit it pretty firmly and a very cool Bob Willis uh, snuffling hold of it at deep mid-on. That's in the air but safe, lofted over that ring of inner fielders, that'll go through for four. Oh, 
Well, that's a good, sensible shot. Used his feet nicely down the wicket and hit it straight. And he's gone to hoist a big one, but he's not going to succeed. He's going to be out, and Lama's taken it safely. Didn't have to move a yard. It's another wicket for Marks, and Ranatunga's finding his ends on 34. Well, that's the spot where David Gow was putting it some 20 yards over the fence. Again, more ball on the next side, and off to the bales. Nicely stumped by Ian Gould. But that's teamwork. That's a good combination. Vic Marks and Ian Gould. It's short, and it's hooked again very powerfully round. And both these two solid batsmen have been very quick to get into position and hammer anything slightest bit short of a length. Got under that, it's got to be out. Yes, yeah, has made the catch safely. Some recompense there for poor old Paul Allett. And Demel goes dying in a brave attempt, caught on the boundary. And then of a very useful, a very attractive partnership by this eighth wicket pair. Posted that high into the offside, and he's caught. Alan Lamb takes the catch. It's another wicket for Graham Dilley. And it makes a score here, 281 for nine in the 58th over. Michael goes for 15. Dilley went to try. And he too swung the bat hard. First ball received, it's another wicket for Dilly, and then a the fascinating day's cricket here. 286 all out area. was the final Sri Lankan total. A very spirited performance by them, the but it does give England a victory here by 47 runs. So, England unbeaten in their two matches so far, and the whole team looking full of confidence. Uh, David Gar was voted man of the match, and Tony Lewis talked to him, and also the England captain, Bob Willis, who was clearly very pleased indeed. Yes, I am, Tony. Very happy indeed. Uh, two good wins, um, w winning the toss on good pitches, scoring lots of runs and really uh, making it very difficult for the sides chasing us. I'm very pleased with the boys, yeah. How much is good form a carryover from the winter, do you think? Well, it's been strange because the winter set me up in good stead and the first knock I played in this country felt much the same and the first two or three games we played in the Championship. Again, the confidence was good and the form was good. And I thought I was playing quite well then. Then we sort of fell foul of the weather again and started to lose a bit of confidence, lose a bit of form. I had a spell just before this competition where my highest score was 20 out of about six knocks, mainly thanks to Tim Lamb. And uh, so I'm glad to be back in the runs again. Tell us a little bit about uh, the scene in the dressing room. The boys obviously are keen to prove that they can play this one day match after the winter experience. Yes, I mean, a, a lot of reputations took a dent in the winter and uh, it's, it's good to see um, Mike Gatting and Graham Dilley coming back and doing well. Um, Paul Allett again back in the squad. And yes, people are keen to prove that um, there was quite a few uh, errors made in the winter. I noticed you kept a few slips up early on and they didn't. Do you think it's important to knock over the early wickets as we have done? I think... Um, when you, a side's chasing, if you can get some early wickets, it puts a almost uh, unbearable pressure on them. And, um, you know, Dulit Mendes played very well, but if we'd got him out early, then they, their task would have been really hopeless. They certainly played some shots out there, didn't they? Down to Graham Dilly. Everyone's played some shots today, haven't they? And now, what about Pakistan? Well, we've got two wins, let's make it three. <laughs>